Hello and welcome to the 2020 baccalaureate service. Each of us has gathered here today in the presence of God to honor these graduates for this significant milestone in their lives. To the graduates, family members, friends, educators, and all the members of the team, congratulations. It is an honor for me to share this occasion with you. None of us could have envisioned the circumstances under which we are participating in this ceremony. A few short months ago, we weren't even aware of terms such as social distancing, shelter in place, and, and many other things that we're not, weren't aware of an, until just recently. However, these do define our current reality. Therefore, this milestone of graduation which once symbolized an immediate launching of you into the next phase of your lives, whether that be the workforce, the military, higher education, now simply places you on the launching pad. So many plans, so many steps, so many dreams, so many visions are simply on hold. You are waiting. We are all waiting with you. This is nothing new. In Psalm 25, King David speaks of the posture of waiting and the posture of waiting well, something from which we could all learn. Psalm 25, 1 through 3, and then Psalm 25, 16 through 21, David writes, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. In both of these sets of verses, this is the first and the last piece of Psalm 25, in both of these verses, David indicates that he will wait for the Lord with trust and integrity. As you're on the launching pad that is graduation, I challenge you to wait on the Lord with trust and integrity. Then, at some point, we will be launched back into all of our lives. At that point, we'll resume the activities of our life. At that point, we can also go back into this scripture where David, we've already read this, where David in verses 4 and 5 says, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. We have a path. We do have a path and He has laid it out for us. So as we wait, I challenge you to wait with integrity. As we then are launched into this world, seek His path, search His path, and then walk with integrity. Let us pray. Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth and all that is in them, provider and sustainer of life, I thank You for each person who has joined us today. Thank You for providing milestones in life by and through which we can celebrate and give You honor and praise. As these graduates and their families are poised to launch into the next phases of their lives, I pray that you will allow them to wait well, allow them to seek your face, to seek your righteousness, and to know and feel your very real 
and comforting presence with them. Prepare in their hearts the plans and instructions you would have them carry out when we are launched back into this world. Then allow them to walk in a manner worthy of you and your promises, always remembering you are on your throne. You will never abandon them. Guard their soul and deliver them. Let them not be put to shame. Allow them to take refuge in you and allow them to be preserved by claiming the uprightness and integrity that only you can provide. These things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. First, let me say congratulations to uh, the class of 2020, Andrews High School. What, a, what an awesome accomplishment, completion of 12 years of schooling and moving on to the next phase of life. My assignment here today is to share a word with you, a word hopefully that will encourage you and help you as you prepare now to move from, from, from this chapter of your life into the next chapter. I'm wishing you all much success and I do want to say to you all a job well done from Pastor Cannon and the Piney Grove Church family here at Andrews, South Carolina. Uh, I want to share with you a parable uh, coming out of the Gospel of, of Luke uh, chapter number uh, 15 and I want to start reading at verse, verse number 11. And it reads this way, it says, A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He pursued a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am, dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. If I had to uh, put a title to this message to you, uh, this class of 2020, the title of this message would be uh, Making Wise Choices. The Bible offers us a parable of the prodigal son. And hopefully by examining this parable and seeing the decisions the prodigal son made, I'm in hopes that it will show you what not to do as you begin this next phase of life. From kindergarten up to your senior year in school, your teachers, your principals, your coaches, your parents, grandparents, our guardians have, have been there to, to hold your hand and to guide you and even make some decisions for you. They served as your protectors, your educators, and your leaders in the hopes that one day you'll be able to hold your own and continue and be successful in the next phase of your life. A phase in life where you must now take what they have imparted in you and use it as your GPS in the next phase of life. You're now faced with choices. You must now choose which route you will take in life. Remember, 
along with each choice, there is an attachment called consequences. Consequences are the results, the aftermath, the effects or repercussions of an action or decision made. As we look at this parable of what is, has been titled as the prodigal son, I want you to see what not to do in life by looking at what he did do or seeing the consequences of his bad choices. It says the father had two sons. The younger son asked of his father to give him his share of the estate. So the father took the estate or inheritance and divided between his two sons. At that point, the youngest son made a decision. He decided to take his estate. He decided to leave home. He decided to travel in a far country and squander his wealth in what the text says, wild living. Because of his wealth, he was able to enjoy some of what he thought was the finer things in life. But, but what he thought was fun was really non-productive. I don't have to define wild living. You're well aware of what I'm talking about. So I want to share with you two points from this text that I want you to take with you in the hopes that it will help you as you move to the next phase of life. The first point that I want to share with you is that bad choices can lead to a poor quality of life. He went from royalty to wild living. Drugs, alcohol, constant partying, reckless and wasteful living. His choices set him on a path to non-productive living. He no longer was governed by his father's teaching and training and it set him on a path that led him to destruction. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end it leads to destruction. He gained friends, but not genuine friends. They were takers, but did not, but did not give back to him. And then the second point that I want to share with you after we have shared with you that bad choices can lead to a poor quality of life. Secondly and lastly, I want to share with you that bad choices will put your life on a downward spiral. In the story, we learn that after he spent all he had, there was a famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. The, he went from having everything to having nothing all because of a bad choice. Because he was in need, he hired himself out to a citizen of the country who, who set him to send him to his fields to feed pigs. He was so hungry that he desired to eat with the pigs. His choice put him on a downward sparrow. He went from fine dining to eating with the pigs. He went from the palace to the pit, all because of a bad choice. So here you are at the point of graduating. God has blessed you over the past 12 to 13 years with good parents, good grandparents, good principals, teachers, good coaches, good guardians. God has placed people in your life to teach you, train you, guide you, and prepare you to move to the next phase of your life. Now the choice is yours. Will I get, will I get a job or choose not to work? The choice is yours. Will I enroll in technical school or not? The choice is yours. Will I enroll in college or not? The choice is yours. As you make this next step in life, take heed to the wise counsel offered in the Proverbs, which says, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them. They will refresh your soul. They're like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way and your feet will not stumble. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course 
of your life. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Seek God's guidance in everything you do. Seek God's guidance in everything you do. It will not lead you astray, but it will lead you to a successful life. Congratulations once again from Pastor Cannon, Piney Grove Missionary Baptist Church, to the class of 2020, Andrews High School. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm Pastor Dean, I pastor a church in Andrews, South Carolina, and I want to say uh, well done to the graduating class of 2020, Andrews High School. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be able to be here and speak to you just briefly about your future, about where things are going. So I encourage you, let's take a deep breath because things have been crazy. Things have just been um, hard to explain. It's been confusing. I know for you as a class, for students, uh, for administration, uh, for teachers, it's just been hard to wrap your arms around it. But uh, for a few moments, I want to talk about what's to come. Where are you going? What are, what's going to happen? And uh, there's a passage of scripture in the Bible in the book of Numbers. And when I think about the last few months, I come to this passage because there's a lot of questions. How are things going to go forward? Uh, things we've missed. I know many of the students and the staff, you've missed many things this last part of your senior year. You didn't get to do some things you wanted to <laughs> and some things you didn't want to. And, uh, but now we're going in another direction and you're fixing to move out into a crazy, confusing world. And in this passage of scripture in the book of Numbers, there's a story about Moses and the children of Israel and they've come out of Egypt and now they're just wandering. They're just uh, walking through the desert. They're trying to find their way. They don't know exactly where Moses does. They don't know exactly where and what it'll look like. They don't know what the land looks like, but they know they're not where they were, but now they're just kind of wandering. And if it's like you and like our community and like our nation, that's where we're at. We're just kind of wandering. We're just kind of going through the motions, trying to figure out where level is, trying to figure out where our stability is, what's going to happen next, what's going to be like tomorrow. But in this passage of Scripture, we see to where God speaks to Moses and Moses speaks uh, to the children of Israel. And he says, all right, we're fixing to go into a new promise. We're fixing to go into a new place. The old place is behind us. And let me say this as, as we go forward. This season will end. It will change. It's different. It'll be a new normal. But it will be something that you can move into as you move forward. But in this passage of Scripture, it is um, Moses speaking uh, to the children of Israel and to those that are going out to, he says spy out the land, but they're going to look for what the land has. What's the world look like out there? What are we going to meet? What, op what opposition is going to be there? Uh, what challenges are going to be in our way? And also, is the land good? Is it prosperous? And he says in Numbers chapter 13, in verse uh, 17, uh, Moses told them to go explore this new land. Go explore the world. And that's what you're going to be doing. As you graduate, you receive your diplomas, you're going to be exploring new lands. You're going to be exploring new territory, brand new challenges. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be good and there's going to be bad. You've already experienced some of the confusion. You've already experienced some of the bad and you've experienced some of the good. But he says, when you go out, I want you to go check out this new place. And he says, this is what I want you to look for. I want you to see if the, the land, if it is if it is good, I want you to look at the people. Are the people there strong? Are the people there weak? Are there a lot of people or a few people? What kind of land do they live in? How's the world? How's the people in that world? And, and as we apply it to our lives and to your life, he's saying, take a look. Look around you. Evaluate. How's the people? How's it going? 
And as we look around it today in our community, our nation, in the world, we can say there's trouble. There's a pandemic. There's, there's obstacles financially, economically. Things have changed drastically in the last two months. But Moses says to those that are looking, he says, let's see what it is. And you're going to find out for yourself. You're going to find out for yourself what it is. How are the people? How's the next step? How's college? How's the workforce? And you're going to see these things. And so they go out and they go and they look at the land and they come back and they give a report. And as they give the report, they say the land is exactly what God promised. They said the land is prosperous. The people there are prospering. And, but they come back and there's 12 that go. 10 come back with a negative report. Two come back with a positive report. Ten said, well, it's everything that we know it's good. And can I say something? No matter where our community and our nation is, it's still good. No matter where we find ourselves in this pandemic and even economically, we still live in the greatest nation on the face of the earth. We have opportunities that abound. It's still good. But they came back and 10 of them gave a negative report. They said, yeah, it's good. The land's good. It's been good for a long time. But there's giants in the land. They're, they're, they're too big for us. The land's good. The promise is good. Your future is great. But there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be giants in your way that are going to try to prevent you from going to the next level. They're going to try to prevent you from receiving what God wants you to have, even in your future, whether it's job, education, families, whatever it may be. But two of them came back with a positive report. And the one that came back with the positive report said, yeah, there's problems, there's obstacles, there's hindrances, but you know what? We can take it. And he said, I suggest that we go up immediately and take this promise. So the question is, when Moses said uh, to, the, to those that were going out, he said, go see what the land is like. But the other question is, at the very end of this chapter is, what are you like? Because that's the key. What are you like? We know what the land is like. By now watching the news, by now going through um, uh, just the, the season that went, you know what the land's like. You know the chaos and the confusion, the good and the bad. There's fear, there's hope. But at the end of this chapter, it says, in verse 32, they came back and they said, the land we explored, the world out there, it's just big. It devours those that are living in it. We saw people there that were of great size. And it says, and we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. So, to the graduating class, Andrews High School, well done. There's going to be obstacles. But the question is, not the obstacles. The question is, who are you? What are you like? When you see yourself, as you move forward, are you like a grasshopper? Are you small and insignificant? Or are you who God says you are? Are the promises good and real? And when you see the giants and the obstacles ahead of you, can I give you some hope? God's with you, and you can go, and you can conquer, and you can be everything that God wants you to be. But you've got to be in your eyes what God says you are, not what other people say you are. So again, in closing, congratulations. Well done, class of 2020. Andrews High School, go out there, take the world, trust God, you can do it. That's